Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Phil Craft Survival Podcast. I'm your host, Kevin, and I'm putting this out on my YouTube channel, and uh, it's going to uh, headquarters as a podcast because some people don't watch YouTube and they're listening in a car. So um, this is going to be a pretty interesting one, I think, <laughs> maybe just for me. Um, so Ushin, which is an Irish Gaelic name, which I'm sure the Americans butcher, is sitting across from me. So Ushin hit me up a couple of months ago on LinkedIn, I believe. That's right, yeah. And uh, uh, he came. He said, hey, I'd like to come by and chat. So he came by and chat, and we chatted for a while. And my wife was like, oh, my God, you two have to do a podcast. Because he's kind of, he grew up very close to where I grew up, but like a, uh, generation after me right he's much younger than me so um he's more in touch with what is going on in ireland and the whole troubles and all, all the border stuff so we're going to talk generally about uh a lot of different topics and we'll bounce back and forth we'll talk about living in ireland and, and, and some of the challenges but uh Oshin is a medical doctor from ireland um born in america Five years old, went back to Ireland. That's right. Learned how to fight real quick, <laughs> I bet. Um, but grew up there, got educated in Ireland, got his doctor, uh, became a doctor. And now he wants to come back uh. to the States and he wants to go into the SF. So go. I've agreed to give him some training in, uh, in, uh, but he has to give some, do some classes and do some austere med. We'll talk about all, all that going forward, what that's going to look like. It, it's it's a whole strange scenario. <laughs> and uh, I was like, you don't want to go into the army as a doctor? And he's like, nope, don't want to do that. Um, all right. So uh, welcome to the podcast. Ah, thanks for having me, Kim. Okay. Your accent is not that bad, I don't think. Others might think it is. I'm trying to tone it down for the American Yeah, audience, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um, Sorry. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. Um, but don't worry about it. If you say something completely weird, I'll translate. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. T talk to me about where you were born. Um, if you remember anything of living in America. And then when you went back to Ireland, I'm actually very interested in the culture shock because it is so different, I think. Yeah. Right. Especially that, that, you know, you know, 25 years ago. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, like I, I was born in Washington, D.C. So we were in an area. I do remember it quite well. Right near Bethesda and that kind of area. Mm. Nice area, kind of suburban. Was uh, your was your your mom was American? No, nope, both are, both Irish. Okay, yeah, Mary but Mary and Jerry. Were Irish. they naturalized U.S. citizens? No, they actually were, they didn't opt into that. They so they had green cards. They had green cards. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. but you were born but, An but, anchor uh, baby. That's it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, no, but um, uh, they 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 they're good Irish people. They gave me the uh, most unpronounceable name yeah. known to man, Ushin, know. Ushin Fakra, you know. Oh my God. Uh, so, yeah. um, good luck with that. Yeah. Yeah. And, but like the household was very Irish. So, I mean, mm -hmm. like it didn't feel in some ways it didn't feel like you were any difference when you went back to Ireland. Yeah. You know, when you're at that age, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a lot of Irish immigrants who came to the States at that point, half of my own family, they lived in America for a couple of years. And then for some reason they wanted to go back and they went back to Ireland and, and reset up their whole life. So I assume that's what they did. Yeah. That's, um, a, that's a difficult one to do, you know, yeah. like my own brother's come out now to, to America. He's mm -hmm. come out to Seattle. Yeah. So we'll see how he settles in there. And it's the same weather. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's exactly it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Lovely Greece guys. Yeah. You know? um, yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, no, I mean, uh, like America, like uh, Washington D.C. is an interesting place. Most of the people that were living beside us were federal employees, like uh, mm -hmm. DEA, FBI, yep. and CIA. Pentagon, and Pentagon, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Our next door neighbor was working mm -hmm. the Pentagon. What'd your dad work at? He, he he's a doctor and also a oh. medical scientist as well. Oh, okay. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, same as my mother. Oh, yeah. Were they they were doctors in the states and they went back? Did they transfer back? No, they're, they're, doc they're doctors first in Ireland, then moved out to the states, and then came back. Oh, okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's a job you can take anywhere. Uh, yeah, lucky enough. <laughs> uh, well, we'll see how that goes. You know, you never know. Mm. But um, yeah, no. Uh, come back to Ireland. I mean, how many in your family? Just me and my brother. Okay. Unusual. Mm. Um, yeah, that's tiny. Yeah, exactly. Most like uh, it's weak. I, I know. I know. I mean, <laughs> all uh, I, we're the odd ones out in, in the the McIlvany clan. Like you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, the rest have um, you know four four or more. You know, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, no. Getting back into Ireland, it, it, it wasn't a big thing. I mean, I I, th I think looking at just coming back here 
and seeing what high schools are like here and all that kind of stuff, I, there's a big difference mm-hmm. between going to school in Ireland and going to school in America. There is, and and you know, I, I, you know, I was obviously educated in Ireland. And it's a very high standard of education for what we would call high school. Excuse me, high school yeah. here. It actually is, and yeah. it's tough. Yeah, and there's none of this multiple choice stuff. At least no. there wasn't when I went through no, school. There isn't. No. I remember doing nine subjects a day. That's it. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah it was a lot. The, the leaving cert is a pain in the hole. Yes. I mean, like, yeah. Uh, I mean, so that would be yeah. that would be. It's not even like a high school diploma. It's almost like an associate's degree, like that level, I think. Yeah. Um, and it's 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 tough. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, the culture is different too. I mm-hmm. mean, like, um, honestly, you know, uh, I don't know what it's like, but. In Ireland, if you're in secondary school, it's going to be either an all boys secondary school or an mm-hmm. all girls secondary still? school. Still, still like for most mm, of it, most yeah. of it, like most of it's run by the Christian Brothers uh, or some other kind of lay, lay Catholic organization. Yeah, um, even still. Yeah, a lot of a lot of them, like a lot of the public schools. Would be. Yeah, like yeah. I, went to, I mean, I, I went to the Marist, and yeah. it was all. There was some civilian teachers, but priests, and yeah. it was all boys. And yeah. we wore uniforms, Same. and yeah, we yeah. beat the crap out of each other every day. <laughs> yeah. It was awesome. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, that, that's it. I mean, I, that's another thing, fights. I remember I was talking to... Do you have I, an American accent when you went back? I don't know, but I probably fucking... I probably did. Probably a little bit. Probably a little bit, and they, they, that probably... Uh, oh, that's a reason to beat the crap out of you yeah, right yeah, there. Yeah, you think you are, you know? know. Uh, but, <laughs> but um, no, like, I mean, like... Um, I think the funny. I can't. I'm not going to say the name of the teacher, but I thought he was ex. He was a great teacher. He was Matt's teacher. Um, Were back. they still hitting you back then? Well, this this is the thing I was going to get. Mm-hmm. So the funniest part of our entire year, where we had this. Uh, he won't hear this. Uh, so so uh, 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 Tony Daly, who's an excellent maths, like the best maths teacher ever, mm-hmm. but uh, he had this way about him. And like, uh, there was this kid at the back of the class called John Steins, and he said. So uh, show me your copy book, John. And the man says, oh, you know, he's just bullshitting on. He says, have you done your work, John? No, you haven't, John. You're fucking joking me, John. And he fix, flicks up his shoe and just flings it at his yeah. head, mm-hmm. knocked his glass off. Mm-hmm. I thought that was hilarious at the yeah. time. I remember saying this to an American there recently, and they're like, oh, you must be so traumatized. I know. And I was like, no, it was the hilarious. Opposite. It's it was the hilarious. opposite. I think it prepares you for the world. I remember a teacher hit me so freaking hard, he almost knocked my head off. Yeah. And I went home and told my mother, and she said, you probably deserved it. <laughs> <laughs> and I did. Yeah, I well, did. I, like, there, I, I think there's a, um, what did you say? Like, there's differences between that, like the shoe and the head. Mm-hmm. That was hilarious. Yeah. But there, like, I mean, like, I remember... Um, there'd be stories that you hear from like my father's generation where I'd be seriously badly beaten but like well, I, I saw some of that too yeah, I yeah. mean I was um, I was pretty quiet until I hit about 16 yeah. but um, like there's they had these leather straps that they yeah. hit you with the priests right yeah. and that that's probably the sanctioned yeah. way to, to corporal punishment yeah. but then you had teachers like beating the crap out of 14 year old yeah. boys like punching and kicking and, yeah. and pulling them by the hair and stuff yeah. and that's way overboard yeah that, um, that, that happened to an uncle of mine mm-hmm. um and uh, he came back home from school he's quite upset from it yeah and this is a guy who is as uh, sharp as can be a really smart guy mm-hmm. but he, he never finished it because you know yeah because uh, of those incidents mm-hmm. but he went home from school his father's my grandfather big jimmy saw it mm-hmm. and he said okay drove to the school went in Grab that guy, hammered the lip and shite him. Yeah, yeah. And you know, it never touched him again. And that's what I would do now if yeah. somebody had put their hands on my kids in school. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. a different. It's a different time. Man. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I, I yeah. tell you, and we were troublesome. I will tell you, yeah. every I, smack I got, I probably deserve. I would agree. I'd like mm-hmm. the same with myself. Yeah. I mean, like a, um, I would, like to be honest, I, I've never. I, I can say this hand in my heart. I've never been badly treated. Mm-hmm. Like uh, anything I got, I deserve. Yeah. By and large, mm-hmm. you know. So you guys moved back to the border area. Right. Well, we moved back. Um, like all my family would be from Monaghan. Mm-hmm. So, know? how far is Monaghan? Tell me where Monaghan is in relation to the country and the border. So, as you know, there's 32 counties in Ireland. Six are in the north, mm-hmm. in, in, in in Northern Ireland. Um, Monaghan is a weird kind of geographical situation because you, you have it almost like an arrow going into the north. Mm-hmm. It's further north than South Armagh. It's further north than Fermanagh, and it's on the border of East Tyrone. Right, so it's right in the middle of. It's like it's like a little enclave, right? And, it's and a little. I know driving there, yeah. Like uh, I know driving to like Castle Blaney, you, you go into the north and then yeah. back into the south yeah. to get there. Yeah. But when my father was a kid, he used to do tomato picking, like mm-hmm. you know, uh, just as a summer job kind of thing, and uh, he would be traveling from Mon to Cabin. You cross the border seven times 
yeah. going between two counties in the Republic. Wow. You cross into the north seven times. Yeah. And yeah. you're stopped by soldiers seven times. I know, right? You know, yeah. So, uh, yeah. 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 Um, so did, because they came from there, that's why they moved back there. Did they have a set? What year was this? Ish. 1996 or 7 I'm not sure okay had the the Good Friday agreement already happened or? Uh, just a, well it was on the cost I suppose mm -hmm. um, let me think 19, no it was in the, I think it was in negotiations at that time yeah. I think 1996 if I remember correctly was the Docklands bombing right when which, the, which when brought them back to the negotiation right. table the so. Docklands bombing in London, in London when, yeah. when there was a, a ceasefire there was a ceasefire. And that stopped the ceasefire. Yeah, right? I, I think that what the, the demand was from the British government is before they do negotiations, you must disarm all weapons. Mm -hmm. The Sinn Féin delegation said, no, that has, ha that has happened during negotiations. We'll, we'll negotiate it out during that period of time. Yeah. Then the British pulled out and they said, okay. And they detonated a, a, a Most, massive bomb, uh, Anfo and Semtex together. Yeah, yeah which uh, was built in South Armagh. It was built in South Armagh yeah. and brought mm -hmm. over uh, in a special specially designed truck mm -hmm. and they um i think see there's several bombs so i don't want to get it mixed up but uh of financial centers but i think that cost them like 150 million or uh, uh, bishop gate i think the one before it cost them about almost a billion i've said that before you know you can kill soldiers yeah. and uh, the f police for decades and this is yeah. what happened as soon as you started hitting the, <laughs> the, the crown in financial yeah. targets and nobody was even getting killed you put a small bomb yeah. in a trash can oh yeah evacuate the whole place blow out all the windows and then that put them to the negotiating table oh, yeah. right there yeah it's, it's very interesting that the 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 the, the uh, evolution not only of um their goals but also their targets you know the IRAs yeah yeah yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. um Talk, talk about the different factions in the IRA for me real quick. Because it, it's a complicated it's thing. Complicated. And neither one of us are experts. No, no. And, um, it, it, it's very interesting history, though, but it's not the kind of history you'd be taught. Like, it's funny. I, I was very lucky. I, I, when I went to college, I made friends with lots of Irish mm -hmm. history students. And all of them were doing sort of contemporary Irish history. So I got, like, uh, the cheat sheet of all, mm -hmm. all this stuff. Here's a common misconception. Yeah. It's about Catholics and Protestants. Oh, nonsense. Not I mean, at all. Well, no. uh, let me give you an example. During uh, the initial provisional campaign at early on, 1970s, you had a guy called Sean McStiffon involved in it. His name, his birth name was James Stevens. His mother was a Northern Irish Protestant woman. His father was a British uh, soldier. Mm. Uh, he was in the British RAF during World War II. Mm. Yet he became lead member of the IRA mm -hmm. you know that's that's not from a, a no one said on religious scruples no you can't join yeah. you know I mean like mm -hmm. they, I think they're it, fairly practical kind of people it became very polarized and, and there were there, there was a byproduct the sectarian oh, yeah. violence and all that but um, it, it had been going on off and on for long long time yeah. and then it, it, what what they what people look at as the modern conflict in northern ireland yeah. rekindled in like the late 1960s yeah. as a civil rights movement very much right so, yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, it, it's it's funny you say it like i mean history has a uh history's interest and i mean like there's a lot of misconceptions i mean so if you're you're talking about the different fractions mm -hmm. and you can link this up to how the trouble sort of blossomed that's mm -hmm. if you want to call it that but um so initially you just had the ira they had a thing before called the border campaign right it wasn't very successful and the leadership became very dublin centric it didn't really have a huge amount of influence in the north for a period of time and the leadership itself under people like carl goulding and other people like that and tomas mcgilla were all going towards more of a communist uh, more, more going towards a, a very far left communist centered uh, and some of them would call themselves stalinist based mm. people this was kind of unpopular with the general grouping that would form the ira at mm -hmm. that time because you have to think ireland was a fairly traditional catholic kind of country and while they might accept things like socialism and that kind of stuff they would, certainly wouldn't be into communism or stalinism and that yeah. kind of stuff mm -hmm. so um there was a there that was causing friction to begin with what what, what time frame are we talking about now we're talking about in the uh, early 60s okay mm -hmm. uh, so and again like it's Dublin centric they're not really looking at the north and then around 1966 during the 50 year anniversary of 916 our, our rebellion in Dublin uh, the loyalists in the north started saying to themselves well uh, they might get notions mm -hmm. uh, and their population their demographics are rising 
Mm -hmm. So let's try and fix that. So a person who seems not to get enough of the blame on this is the Reverend Ian Paisley. Oh, yeah. He was a psychopath. He was, yep. a, he was a... And when people talk about, oh, uh, fundamentalist, no, he ran... He was a cult leader. He, he, yeah. brought, he had his own church, the Free Presbyterian Church, not the same as regular Presbyterian, Free Presbyterian Church. Um, he hid behind his religion mm -hmm. and he just had an unbelievable hatred of of Irish people in general and Catholics as yeah, a byproduct burn, of burn Catholics oh, is, yeah. is a, a, yeah. a term that yeah. coined by him yeah. um, I mean it, it's such a complicated uh conflict and I'm, yeah. I'm trying to think of the listener right now oh yeah and yeah. I'm trying to frame it a little bit I, I'll put it it's like Ayatollah Khomeini yeah yeah uh, but mm -hmm. with uh, like a fervent kind of mm -hmm. uh, Old Testament vibe Let, let's do this right just for the listener let's talk about three or four of the the nationalist groups in Northern Ireland sure. and, and, and you know two or three of the, the, the Protestant okay. uh, loyalists loyal to the crown and yeah. wanted to stay part of England let's so, do that so, let's so, talk about nationalism first so so with the nationalists again like it comes down to this thing I was saying earlier on like 966 the first car bomb in, in, in this conflict was planted by the UVF uh, uh, Protestant one uh, Ulster Volunteer Ulster, Force Ulster mm -hmm. Volunteer Force which were Protestant Dublin. loyalists, loyalists. yeah mm -hmm. uh, Brit British loyalists mm -hmm. put, put it in that, yeah. that way they planted a bomb in Dublin fairly poorly made didn't kill anybody uh, but things started ratcheting up killed a couple of Catholics here a couple of Catholics there then they started doing false flag attacks which was really interesting Ian Paisley along with the Ulster Volunteer Force and a different group which kind of faded away called the Protestant Volunteer Force at that time mm -hmm. Uh, bombed the hydroelectric facilities in the north causing massive blackouts mm -hmm. and then he said it was the Catholics and there was a huge pogrom just burning people out of their homes killing people and the population of Monon for example huge numbers of people really came from Tyrone mm. Armagh Belfast mm. just pushed into Monon mm. uh, so this is where the, fra the the friction that happened in the IRA happened there because people are looking around and this is around 1969 at this point after that massive big uh, upheaval, civil unrest. The Irish people in the north are looking around saying, well, what are you going to do to protect us? And the leadership, uh, then this, it, which were going far more towards the left, far more liberal, weren't really focused on the military aspect of things. Uh, and that's where you got a breakaway called the Provisional IRA. Mm -hmm. And they're the kind of the big players for the rest of this um, this series of troubles. Now, there have been other offshoots of that in the period of time. For example, other people broke off from, uh, when, when the Provisional IRA broke off, the remaining rump of the original leadership called themselves the Official IRA. Mm -hmm. And were also known as a nickname called the Stickies mm -hmm. due to, the, the the Easter lily lapel they had was a stick on one rather than a pin. Okay. It's, it's no, no mm -hmm. nothing important. But, but that. they were they were like more communist. They were right? they were yeah. they mm -hmm. were fully communist back. In fact, they're, they're, uh, they're some of their people have been linked to North Korea and wow. other, other groups. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, like they, they were there was a fairly bloody feud between the official IRA and the provision IRA to get dominance. Mm -hmm. The provision IRA got dominance primarily because they were a broad church. They were basically like like any sort of standing conventional army. You have people who come in from all different backgrounds. They have different points of view, but they come for a singular purpose. Mm -hmm. Like if you're an American, you could come from Boston and have some very northern points of view. You come from Alabama, you have very southern points of view. But ultimately, you're going to say, I'm going to serve the United States. We're going to kill the enemy. And that's, mm -hmm. that's it. And by and large, uh, the Provision IRA had that kind of mentality. We don't care where you came from. As long as you're not compromised in any way, yeah. they uh, had fairly good standards back then. They right? did, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And they, they'd be uh, like during things like fairly infamous moments where there's huge amount of people wanting to join. They're fairly quick to tell people, particularly young fellas, mm -hmm. there's only two ways it's going to end for you. You're going mm -hmm. down a hole, or you're going into jail, uh, and that's how it's going to end. Yeah, and, uh, and I heard, I heard that interview before where the guy like if somebody came in and said i want to kill protestants they'd yeah. be like go somewhere else yeah. not, that's not our goal no yeah you know uh, uh, the the other big uh, group out during that period of time was the INLA, mm -hmm. irish national liberation army uh they were they were like uh they weren't communist but they were very socialist mm. uh, they were more of the ideological offshoot of the the official era they broke away from them as well mm -hmm. um they had some fairly notable leaders in it. 
Dominic McGlinchey was I, one. I remember him. Yeah, well. uh, I, I spent time looking for him. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I um, he was, and uh, they had some very violent people. Oh, jeez, yeah. Yes, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes they, what, was uh, Desi O'Hare? Was he Irish? Desi- mm-hmm. yeah. Border Fox. I think the he was. Border Fox. I think yeah. the IRA cut him loose because he was a he was a, a loose cannon as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, you, you have to understand, right? And I'm not supporting the IRA at all. No, but no, no. When you're running an insurgency like that, you need the support of the people, right? So when you start robbing banks and killing civilians and kidnapping bank managers and chopping their fingers off and all all this crap, the people turn against you. And without the support of the population, you're done. You are done. That's why the IRA, I don't think the INLA had this, but the IRA had a policy never to get in gunfight with Southern security forces, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. Irish Army, Irish police, right? Yeah. Now, uh, I think Desi O'Hare or uh, Dominic Lynch shot at and maybe kill cops in the South, right? Um, but the IRA had that policy because it's political suicide. You start killing Irish soldiers, killing Irish cops, oh, yeah. the people turn against you. I remember... Uh, we were doing. We used to take any. When I was in the infantry, we would escort cash around the country, right? Because cops right. had no guns. They still right? do that. Still do that. Did they? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I remember you'd have two Land Rovers. You'd have a police car. You'd have two Land Rovers with four soldiers in each, and then the armored truck in the middle. And we would drive all around the country. It wasn't a bad duty. You got to get out and see stuff. Um, suck the fumes off the tailpipe <laughs> of the Land Rover for like eight hours straight. Yeah. But I remember an NCO saying to me, "Look, if the IRA want to take this money, they could take it." But in order to do so, they have to kill eight soldiers and two cops, yeah. and they're not willing to do that. So no. we were there as a deterrent more yeah. than anything. Like, yeah. we were heavily armed deterrent, but yeah. th- that that political mindset, you have to have some sort of standards, yeah. or you're just seen as fucking psychopaths. Oh, yeah. And mm-hmm. I mean, and also, I mean, same with uh, other things with regards to finance as well, like drugs, yeah. not going to happen. Yeah. I mean, th- those people were fairly ruthless. With I remember drugs. hearing stories about kids running drugs in Belfast and they'd kneecap them. Yeah. yeah, yeah or or, yeah. or do what they call a six pack, which is ankles, knees, yeah. elbows. Oh my God. Yeah. Uh, it's but brutal. It, like but, uh, kneecapping is they lay you down on the ground yeah. and they shoot your back of your knee with a pistol yeah. and blow your kneecap off. Yeah. And they, they would give you a choice. Is you can cross your knees with one bullet or, or two bullets. Oh, one. And I heard a story from, because I oh. knew a lot of people who lived in Belfast. Yeah. I heard a story where they'd be like, you freaking whatever your name is yeah. um you've been found guilty of anti-social behavior they call it yeah. report to this alley yeah. for kneecapping at this time yeah and if you don't then we'll find you and kill you yeah and yeah. kids would show up and they get kneecapped yeah. it's insane i think they had to go through se- like i mean i think there were several warnings and then beating yeah and then eventually to yeah. this but i mean yeah. like yeah uh, it's very interesting i think they realized early on it's a very easy way to weaken a uh, society yeah by having drugs pumped in there and yeah. also it brings an awful lot of heat it does T- particularly during like the 1980s when you look at america and their war on drugs Mm -hmm. you had an awful lot of supporters in america Mm. for provisional ira yeah like noraid was where most of the money came from and guns Mm -hmm. and guns like m60s were taken from fort benning and suddenly end up in in the north you wonder how the hell that happened yeah the barrett 50 cows that were used in south of america came from america yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. like i mean for example um you know when you talk about like uh casualties on the british side like i think the highest ranking member of the SES that was killed was a guy called her herbert westmacott his family are v- very well connected so they couldn't really say nothing happened yeah uh, but um he was killed by an m60 that was clearly from america yeah, yeah. Uh, and that was by the m60 guy. it was a guy called angelo fusco mm-hmm. an italian guy from uh the north but yeah he was as much of a victim as anyone else because there was very anti-catholic kind of bias mm-hmm. out there he had joined the IRA and the, they called them the M60 gang but they were, they were mm. an active service unit in Belfast they escaped uh, mm. they, 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 um, they had a shootout with the, the SES uh, they clipped your man Her- Herbert uh, he died instantly and they they got imprisoned then and they broke out of Crumlin uh, jail and they escaped off to the United States mm-hmm. uh, there was a huge thing about extraditing them back and I think one of the people that actually uh, the Kennedy supported keeping them there, but also George Bush, Jeb Bush, mm-hmm. I believe, was actually one of the Republicans that actually uh, tried to prevent him getting extradited. As yeah, well. it's kind of strange yeah. when you see. Both it really sides. is. Yeah. I, I think uh, we're jumping forward now. But Sorry. luckily, no, 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 it's good. Luckily, after nine eleven, Americans looked at bombings and killings and shootings yeah. differently. Yeah. And look. Uh, uh, fortunately that the peace process was was yeah. well on the road there but let's let's so you have the ira you have the inla and yeah. you have the official ira yeah and then and the the the, the official ira kind of 
they, they became less and less relevant. They had one or two people who were fairly militant in them, like mm -hmm. Joe McCann was a serious operator. He killed about 13 soldiers, mm -hmm. a lot of parachute regiment people and some under people think he may have killed a few undercover MRF operatives mm -hmm. uh, who are bad, bad yeah, people. Yeah. But I mean, like a, um, they're kind of like a Salu scout kind of yep. type of soldier. Mm -hmm. um, but basically, um, Joe McCann, I, I, I don't know if this is true, it's rumored, but he was, it seemed like he was going, he was asked to go to a meeting uh, with the with the uh, membership of the official IRA, and he was he was killed by soldiers. Um, don't know how that came to be mm -hmm. that he was unarmed and all the rest, but it, it happened. Mm -hmm. um, really, from that point on, that was kind of the Milton edge of the official IRA gone, and I, I don't think the official IRA wanted a Milton edge. Mm -hmm. If you get me. Um, mm -hmm. So I think the provision IRA just got dominance then. Yeah, and, and the provisional was obviously a provisional name that never yeah, went away. Never yeah. went away, no. Mm -hmm. they, and they, they became like the provost, basically. Yes, That's yeah. It. Okay, let's talk about Protestant groups because Protestant um, groups in the north, um, you know, the, the, when when England invaded Ireland like 900 years ago, whatever, and settled it, they brought over settlers basically from England, yeah. gave them huge swaths of land. Yeah made the took it off the catholics yeah. and then made the catholics work on the land for them so yeah. they had all the land they had all the power they had all the money uh catholics couldn't vote because you had own land to vote yeah uh, they couldn't work in the government they weren't police they, yeah. they, it was very very biased and it was absolutely um it was they were second class citizens yeah, at, at a, yeah. yeah they really were yeah. so when the protestant groups in the north started seeing this uh kind of pushback they started getting scared yeah and they're like we have to protect our neighborhoods and we have to make sure that this part of the country doesn't get given back to ireland yeah right yeah because it was very uncertain at one point you know oh yeah and i mean like even after like, i mean this this is the gas thing about it you know you're right like i mean uh, look uh the entirety of ireland was taken over 900 years mm -hmm. ago right uh the north was particularly different though because mm. they were able to get as you said yourself planters or settlers in that area and they set up as their very first colony like mm. even the design of places like Derry are designed like every other colony they have with uh, structural designs and everything else like a diamond in the square and all that kind of mm. stuff but you know and big part of that is clearing the land and they did what you would call modern day ethnic cleansing mm. they wiped out countless Irish people in those it was to hell or to Connacht mm. you know and most of them took hell so mm. I mean like all these people were killed. Uh, they planted that land. And when it came to, like, as you said yourself, uh, the UVF got set up before the IRA ever existed, mm. which is the gassing about yeah, it. The you know? Ulster Volunteer Force, Force is, is a, is a na uh, loyalist a paramilitary group. Paramilitary group. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, they, they were a, um, a big part of holding down the North. But I mean, like, um, it was very uncertain, as mm -hmm. you said yourself. I mean, like, when, when that was divided up, they designed it. It, it, they, and there was their own, own words it's a protestant state for protestant people and they designed it so that it would never ever fall into an irish catholic majority mm -hmm. or an irish majority let's just call it an irish majority yeah. let's remove the religion mm -hmm. out of it yeah it's an ethnic war like you know mm -hmm. um so it's it's gas because like you know uh Monon and louth originally with the border uh, commission when they're designed we could have easily been in there mm -hmm. very easily mm. but because you had such act i i think personally you had some very very active members of the old ira there like you had own o'duffy who you know was if you looked at him in a normal kind of setting you'd say that guy's a psychopath mm -hmm. but he was a very formidable uh soldier mm. um him and frank aiken who is from South Armagh, mm -hmm. were more or less in charge of the Northern Division, the IRA. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the, the barracks that I, I trained in and served in in Dundalk is Aiken Barracks. Yeah. It's named, you, yeah. Know, it's, you know, it's funny, like when I was in the infantry in Ireland, yeah. sometimes we'd get uh, put on duty to go sh fire shots over the grave of old IRA yeah, members yeah, yeah, from yeah. their 20s and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. So you had Irish soldier, current Irish soldiers That's brilliant. doing ceremonial duty. Uh, firing party over the graves of IRA members from the 20s. Well, you know, if, uh, when Frank Aiken died, they brought his cough. The, the people in South Armagh, at, e even up until like the 1960s, thought that Frank Aiken was going to lead the Irish army into the north. Mm -hmm. They were so sure that this guy, yeah. cause he, he, yeah. was, he was a physical force Irish yeah. Republican. Yeah. He was part of Fianna Fáil, 
At the time, Fianna Fáil would call themselves a barely constitutional party. They had a lot of they had a lot of guys who had a lot of bodies on them. Yeah, uh, yeah. and Frank Egan was one of them. Yeah. But when he died, they buried him in Cross McGlen, and the Irish Army gave the uh, the firing salute in Cross McGlen. Cross McGlen. Wow. Yeah. You know, tr- when I was in the Irish Army in uh, Aiken Barracks in Dundalk, yeah. I remember talking to an NCO, and he said we had FNFALs back then, yeah, right? Yeah. And somebody said, oh, we got these in the 60s when we thought we'd need them because the Irish Army was poised yeah. to invade the North. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, the the, per- the, the, the the reason why per- fully lies at the foot of Jack Lynch, really. You know, he's a Fianna Fáil politician at the time. And like a lot of people, like there's, there's like people talk about um, splits in, in, say, for example, Sinn Féin or the IRA. There's, there are splits happen. There, there's high possibility of split happening in Fianna Fáil at that time as well. You had people who were like the Hawks, like Neil Blaney from Donegal. You had Boland, who is all, who's the, uh, the son of, uh, or the nephew of uh, Harry Boland, mm-hmm. you know, uh, IRB and IRA member. Uh, and all these people were saying, well, you know, we believe that in the national question we want a united ireland and they're killing our civilians in their droves yes Mm -hmm. and the the idea was that they would put in a force there and hold off until it became sort of a un thing Mm. and get peacekeepers in there Mm -hmm. and there was all ready to go but jack lynch then wimped out of it and i mean ever since if you talk to any person it doesn't matter if they're Sinn Féin, Fianna Fáil, Fianna Gael or whatever in the border area because border areas are strangers politics Mm -hmm. They may hate each other and everything else, but they're kind, they all realize people in the North got a rough deal. Mm-hmm. They all think Jack, Jack Lynch is a milk and water bastard, really. Mm-hmm. They don't think he, he, he uh, served those people well. Wow. Imagine if, if that had launched. Because that, I, I it know... Changed, it would have changed the history of Ireland. It really would have. And I, I, I tell you, um, the, having served in the Irish Army yeah. in the 80s, I can't imagine what it was like in the 60s. Yeah. Because they were mm, probably not ready. No. Um it's funny, even in the 80s, right? I, I'm just going to say this because it's ancient history, but serving on the... And I was in a counter-terrorist unit in Ireland. Now, the Irish government's policy towards the IRA in particular were, you leave us alone and we leave you alone. And it was very obvious. Like, I, I, I stood on checkpoints on the border yeah. and it was very obvious that the cops were paid off. And, yeah. and, and you know, the old Pablo Escobar man, you know, Plato or Plume or whatever Plato it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Silver or, or yeah, gold. Lead, 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 lead or gold, lead. right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I remember we did this massive border operation when I was in the infantry. Yeah. And they brought up cops from Dublin. Yeah. And there was a cop from Dublin on my checkpoint and he was searching every car. Yeah. And the local cops were pissed. They were yeah. getting fucking visibly yeah. upset. Yeah, because he wasn't playing the game, man, yeah. and and uh, That's interesting, the, 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 yeah, yeah, it was yeah. very, very obvious. I, I, I tell you, even in in special ops, we we did uh, we did a uh, people would come in from this rugged area up in Dun- Donegal, right in the south, yeah. and they'd be like, "We heard machine guns being fired, and there were zeroing weapons or whatever, right?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that would go to the cops, and it would get filtered up to army headquarters, and it get pushed down to range wing, and we would go in and set up OPs, yeah, uh, for three days, overwatching these. Firing, um, firing ranges, firing ranges basically yeah. and we'd bring a cop with us because we yeah. did not have the powers of arrest for soldiers right yeah, yeah. so we would go in heavily armed um but i remember the first time we did it th- at least the first time i was on it and it went up to army headquarters for approval and it got approved but they wanted us to go up there in army trucks right like big army trucks like the, the most uh um paranoid people along the border right along the border you yeah, know yeah. and we ended up renting civilian vans they, and blocking out yeah. the windows and all that but yeah. they didn't want us running into anything because yeah. now it, it changed when people like freaking desi o'hare and yeah. dominic mcglinchey came across the border and started killing people and 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 um that that anytime it spilled into the south it was no yeah. bueno right yeah and yeah. then they would change yeah but as far as like that there was army could have sealed that border if they wanted to yeah but it's very hard to do that because i mean like there's 325 crossings that you know of mm-hmm. that's not including fields where you can walk over and it's, it's not a line on the ground it's no. a line on a map yeah exactly yeah. exactly and i mean like you know it's, it's gas you're saying about cops right? so i mean like i think it went both ways because there's a cop he was based in monon he was actually yeah. from armagh uh-huh. originally he's a guard Called, nicknamed the Badger. I'm just going to leave that out there. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if you heard about this, mm-hmm. but if you look up in the Mon and Dublin bombings, 
Yeah. He was working for the British, and really? he, he let those people across. Yeah, he let those. He, yeah. he, he let. He yeah. gave a passageway yeah. for these I'm, guys. I'm to not. Escape, I'm right? not faulting the government, honestly, or the cops. Yeah. I don't know. If, oh, and, he, and at the time, I'm young and I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm all gung ho, yeah. right? But I don't know if I want to be out in the British either. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. It, it's not our conflict; it's yours. Yeah. So if yeah. you look at it that way, um, and the, and the British. They handle it so badly. Oh, like Christ. they real for decades. But, but I mean, like I, I was saying this to you earlier in the car. I mean, like it's kind of it's typical of the person they got in to do it. Like I mean, they got this guy Frank Kitson, who is a uh, counterinsurgency guru for the British Army, and he put down the in put down the insurgents in Malaya. Yeah. He put down the Mau Mau in Kenya. I said, I'll do this to the Irish. Mm -hmm. He was wrong yep. because you know he set up and it, he has two books called Gangs and Counter Gangs. And low, directing low intensity operations. In low, and he wrote these strangely enough during the period of time, and they got published during when he was actually. Wow. Uh, he yeah. shouldn't have done that. That yeah. was pretty stupid. Yeah. But I mean, like, um, because a lot of the IRA members read all these. Yeah, and they're like, this seems familiar. Oh, here's uh, the answer sheet. Yeah, exactly, yeah. more or less. Yeah. <laughs> so they they figured out. Um, like I mean, he he set up this group called the Military Action Force or Military Response Force. Military, who knows? But MRF. Mm -hmm. Um, and their idea was kind of similar to the Slew Scouts in, in, in Africa. Um, they acted as a counter gang, as uh, Kitson put it. They would dress up in civilian clothes, would have a Sterling submachine gun mm -hmm. or a Thompson gun or something like that. Some of them might be used with a paramilitary, like a loyalist paramilitary. Mm -hmm. And they would purposely shoot people that weren't in the IRA. Mm -hmm. So their idea was to shoot civilians or, or people who may be from a SDLP, which is a social democrat um, Labour Party, which are, to put it mildly, middle of the road, working class kind of Catholics that don't want to get involved in any serious, right. non-violent, yeah. non-violent, mm -hmm. not not, mm -hmm. not physical force people. Yeah. Um, so the idea was to shoot these people, and at the idea at that point in time, 1972, the IRA were more of a defensive kind of mm -hmm. organisation. They were hoping that the, the provisional IRA would come in to defend them, and they would get a conventional force and crush them. Mm. The other side of which is a bit darker is that they wanted to push more and more people into the IRA so it would be a very stark, easy war which they could just go in total war and wipe them all out. Mm. Now, the IRA caught onto this really quickly. They found out who was supplying them information and they started doing surveillance. They did reconnaissance on them. And they found out the MRF were going into all these... Uh, to describe to the viewers like how bad living conditions were if you were a Catholic in the North in the 1970s, it was like... It was not, not ghetto. It, it was, was yeah. it, it, Calcutta was looking nice, you know. Yeah, yeah I mean, like yeah. It, you had no running water. Actually, yet. didn't Mother Teresa go and live in one of the, <laughs> yeah, the yeah. neighborhoods? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah but I mean, like it, 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 it yeah, it, it was, it was a shit. I mean, yeah. it, it was, mm -hmm. it was terrible. And um, so th these, uh, they'd have these mobile laundry units, and they'd be going. Yeah. In. This is a fantastic story. Yeah. I've heard about this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so it, it, it was very smart in some oh, ways. They were, they were taking the Catholics' laundry because yeah. nobody has dryers. Exactly. Because yeah. dryers, I, I didn't have a dryer growing up because yeah. it takes so much electricity, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And but you're living in a country where it rains every day, yeah, so exactly. there's no way to dry clothes. So yeah. laundry vans would come around, yeah. take people's laundry, yeah, yeah. bring it back a day or two later, or yeah. fold it in it. Well, they were swabbing the laundry for gunshot yeah. residue or for explosive yeah. residue. Exactly. So that, look that's at, genius. Look yeah. for stuff like nitroglycerin. Yeah. Fertilize and mm -hmm. they're also looking to see how many shirts there are. Like, there's supposed to be two men in that house. Why is there f five men's shirts? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, so the setup was they'd have a woman who would do all the nice chatting. Yeah. And they, she'd get tidbits of information and she would bring it back and piece it all together in, in the yeah. headquarters. They'd have the, 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 the guy driving it who'd be on loan from the SES and they'd have two SES lads on loan doing special reconnaissance in the roof. Yeah. Um, but they were. At this point, it was known as the MRF. They're on loan from the SES. Yeah. Uh, and they had, uh, they were driving around. They also had a place where they go through intelligence dossiers called the Gemini Massage Parlor. Uh, and there was a couple people in there going through stuff. And the MRF was kind of a mix of reconnaissance and intelligence and then a hard hitting, mm -hmm. uh, sort of, as they would say, counter terrorist force. Mm -hmm. Um so was the MRF replaced by the the fourteen? It was, group? yeah. Right, so yeah. So so um, this why this is the story why they got replaced. Yeah. So uh, a fairly prominent member of the Belfast IRA, part of a special kind of counterintelligence unit, a guy called Darky Hughes, Brendan Hughes, mm -hmm. uh, picked on this, started uh, doing reconnaissance on them, then uh, ambushed them, machine gunned uh, the um, the wash uh, the the laundry van, killed the sapper, 
kill the two guys in the roof. They just raked the roof. The woman yeah. escapes. She ran into a Catholic's house, said she was being chased by loyalists. Yeah. And hid there until she got rescued. Yeah. But these guys sent off their second detachment of their active service unit. Yeah. And wiped out five of them in the Gemini massage parlor. Mm -hmm. Now, to this day, the only person that's ever they've ever said has been killed was the guy who was shot in the face in the uh, in the laundry van. Mm -hmm. a guy called Telford Stewart. Mm -hmm. And you know how it is; they put them back to their parent unit. Yep. Uh, so I think he was like a, an engineer or something. Mm. Like that. But no one can explain why an engineer is strapped with an MP5 yeah. in a, in a laundry, laundry van in, yeah. in, in the Falls Road. You know. Yeah. You see, you, you I look at all these conflicts. Like yeah. I just did I did a whole thing on the Battle of Little Bighorn. Right. And oh, I look yeah. at all these conflicts from both sides. Yeah, yeah. And I look at it from. I mean, there's pure genius in that operation. Yeah. And there's pure genius to take it down. Yeah. Like like just the the, the outside the box thinking. That's why I think Northern Ireland is a very cool. You shouldn't say cool. A lot of people died, but yeah. it's a very interesting conflict because oh, yeah. it was old school techniques and not computers and not yeah. all this wazoo drones and all that. Yeah. It was very on the ground, yeah. face to face, yeah. and old school espionage, yeah. intelligence, counterintelligence stuff. Yeah. You know, and, but like going towards the nineties, you started getting some of the more advanced stuff. Yeah, it was really interesting. I mean, like someone. Uh, this is the thing that annoys me is that you, I got the benefit of having people who did history in college. Mm -hmm. So I, I got to learn all the stuff from them and mm. I did my own reading then. Mm -hmm. And also you hear stuff when mm -hmm. you live or you know people from a border area. Yep, you do. Mm -hmm. But, a, um, you know, it's never going to be taught in schools because it, it, pe people don't want to bring this up. But it's it's like having a little mini Vietnam in your backyard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, like, for example, the first AI computer system tracking cars was in the north. It's mm -hmm. called something like Vengeance or something like that. It, it would be able to take the... Um, uh, the license plate, make a car, and then track it all around. Mm. And they had they had cameras everywhere. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Uh, if you cross the border on uh, the main highway going from Dundalk to Newry, yeah, they had pillboxes all the way out, like a mile, and and for a couple of miles to the border, you couldn't stop, right? Yeah. But by the time you pulled in, they already knew who you were, yeah. and they knew, and they they pulled you into the search bay and all that. A buddy of mine was in Dundalk in the military, and he he's family from Belfast, yeah. and. He drove up to Belfast and he was selling his car. And he had a guy at, I think he lived in like the, uh, near, uh, is it, uh, what's that big famous graveyard? Oh, um, are you talking about Belfast? Yeah. Oh, I know the one you're talking where, about. Where the, 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 the loyalist the, guy shot all the people. Yeah, and all I, that. I, yeah. I, I, I live next there. He lives in, in like. It, I know, yeah. know the place you're talking yeah. about. It's, it's escaped me now, but um, yeah. Yeah. the one where Michael Stone yes. threw hand yeah, grenades yeah, in yeah, and yeah, church yeah. shooting. But he lived right next to that. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, but he, he, he drove across the border, went there and he was selling his car and the British yeah. patrol came past and they're like, what are you doing? And he was like, I'm selling my car. And they were yeah. like, yeah, it's a good car. It just crossed the border an hour ago. You know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, they they had to evolve, right? And it's the oh, same yeah. as the American military everywhere and every military really. Yeah. The, the, the enemy a, evolved and you evolved yeah. and the enemy evolved and you evolved. Oh yeah. And, um, same with bomb making and bomb oh, diffusing. Oh yeah. 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 I mean, like th yeah. that, I'd be very honest. Yeah. And like, I'm, uh, you know me, I wouldn't be promoting uh, mm -hmm. the, the IRA or, mm -hmm. or armed uh, political violence mm -hmm. anywhere uh, but you gotta sort of say like Jesus these guys were s smart yes uh, mm -hmm. and it was kind of it was interesting because I mean like just to look at it very dispassionately I, you know people did die in it and it's a terrible mm -hmm. thing but if you look at the game like the counter mechanisms yeah like they went in mm -hmm. originally the British army went in there with like wire cutters yeah and they had to open up the thing then they got the uh, what they call the wheelbarrow uh, the little automated yeah. robot mm -hmm. uh, which they would basically shoot something shoot yeah, it with a shotgun yeah, basically yeah. Mm -hmm. and it just kept getting more and more interesting and then these guys started developing mercury tilt switches yeah. and anti-handling mm -hmm. devices and we, the, the, there was an incident where they'd put a bomb out and they just did it so they could watch what the British do yeah. and then counter that on the next one right yeah. I went to a school in the Irish Army like when I was in the infantry I went to a, a school called Specialist Search Team School because we were in Dundalk we were along the border right yeah. and we were search teams to find bombs and IED and booby traps wow. and and um, the, the caches that were booby trapped and, and landmines or not landmines but IEDs along the road or, and along the railway track uh, to the north and all that right so we trained on all these TTPs like we'd pull up to a, a, 
a kind of checkpoint area to, as, a, as a control point, right? And then we get out and then let's say there's a derelict house and we have to search that for uh, a cache that might be boot trap, let's say, yeah. right? So then you would you would do a whole 360 around it with buried wire detectors and mine detectors, right? Yeah. And then you would, you know, move to the thing very, very carefully in teams. And then you would go in and you, you'd go in, not the front door. And then you yeah, would just, yeah. and it was all, and if you found something, you're supposed to sketch it, bring it back. And oh, then, then the ordinance officer, uh. yeah, like we, we were like freaking base for the <laughs> IED so the officer wouldn't get killed, right? Jeez. But we went we went to Dublin. We went to the engineer school and we learned all about IEDs, right? Yeah, yeah. And bombs and tripwires and mercury tilt switches and yeah. all that stuff. And and, and it, it, it's pretty fascinating on how to improvise all yeah. that stuff. I, and, and what I tell you, there was a guy in my class was the same guy who drove across the border that was from uh, like Divis Flats or somewhere in Belfast, so right? Was he a member? I, I, I'm not going to say yeah, that. Yeah, 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 and, yeah. But yeah. he, and he's a super nice guy. But yeah. at the end of the course, yeah. we had to build an IED. We had to build a bomb, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And you could choose what you did it for. You, you know, you could say, okay, it's in a milk carton, right? And then it's all about completing the circuit, right? So yeah. instead of a detonator going, it was a, a, a light bulb. Bo yeah, 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 a bulb yeah, would yeah, go yeah, off, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So some guys would build- Don't wear like, a ring. Don't wear a yeah. ring. <laughs> so some guys would build that, like a, I remember one guy had a milk carton. When you picked it up, it, it, the switch was- pushed so it detonated yeah, right yeah. i'm gonna guys to do this and this well this guy and i almost said his name but i'm not gonna yeah, yeah this yeah. guy had an ammo can and when they looked at it the instructors looked at it and he had like eight switches on it right and the instructors actually said like if you looked at this thing it went off if you shine the light it went off you oh, picked it up it went off. Sense, if you yeah. tilted it went off he had like switches all over it right wow. and the instructor said i'm glad you're on our side yeah yeah yeah, yeah <laughs> now yeah. i went through the same course as he did and i couldn't do that yeah. so i think he was trained somewhere else yeah, uh, yeah. super nice guy yeah oh, but it's funny you said that i mean like um i remember hearing a story back back a while um so when things were getting more technologically advanced like uh Thermal, thermal vision, for example, mm -hmm. they're looking for people in a fairly rural part. I think it was Armagh, it could have been East Tyrone, I'm not sure. But uh, they're looking for particular people and they could see this kind of vague kind of heat source coming from a derelict cottage. And they're like, okay, went in under the sheet. Turns out it was just a, um, they had gotten the wires from a radiator and shaped it out to a person wow. and put up there. So they lured them in. They're about to pull up the blinds and I said, don't, don't pull the blinds, thermal, uh, photosensitive cell. Yeah. So opened it, would set off a bomb. Yeah. They'd have gone up yeah. in smoke. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. The, 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 the amount of thought and patience they yeah. had, mm -hmm. like yeah. if someone wasn't right, they would wait. Yes. They would wait. Because they don't have to be right every time. They no, just have to be right, right once. once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, and when you sit back and you look at human behavior and you can change a routine as occupying force, but you can only really change it so much. Yeah. Right. Very much so. And mm -hmm. I think, I think, you know, it's funny you said it, like they observed, uh, they, they, they took note of how people reacted to it. Yeah. They also took note, I think, how politically things went when they yeah. set off a bomb. Mm -hmm. Like for example, they, they had some, or especially early on, they had made big mistakes yeah and people were like that's not the way we do it yeah uh we need to have uh we need to call it in beforehand a certain and mm -hmm. we have certain codes because of people are making prank calls yeah, gonna yeah, screw us up yeah. so but i mean like I, I remember you were talking earlier on about like uh the finance was that caught on the tape about the docklands yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so i mean like it's, it, it's ancient history it's, it's, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah 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 but, but, but i was gonna say like um so they learned from not only their success, their failures, but also their successes. So what was a success for them in one sense was a big failure for them in another sense. When they killed, up in Warren Point in 1976, I think mm -hmm. it was, they killed about 18 soldiers. I heard that bomb go off. Oh, I, 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 yeah. I, I, I was- That was uh, very close, yeah. Actually, I was, yeah, very close. Yeah, 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 across yeah, the water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was hunting with my old man yeah. and we heard boom, this big bomb. And he immediately said, that's a bomb in Northern Ireland. Yeah. Uh, yeah, a yeah. massive bomb. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, uh, so they killed, and I mean, to be honest with you, again, the, cal the calculating approach, it was very meticulous. They saw how they reacted. They said, okay, if we bomb a place, they're gonna get set up an instant uh, point or mm -hmm. IP somewhere which is the most sheltered place. Yep. And it was behind some barn or something mm -hmm. like that. And they planted the second, much larger bomb there. Mm -hmm. uh, and that killed a lot more people. It almost wiped out the helicopter that was medevaced yeah. these people as well. Mm -hmm. So that killed 18 people, injured countless more, like legs yep. gone, faces mm -hmm. ripped off. Mm -hmm. But on the same day, they killed Lord Mountbatten. Yes, I remember. Uh, and mm -hmm. they, uh, like there's a lot of dodgy stuff about Lord Mountbatten. And uh, if people love conspiracy theories in America, mm -hmm. look up the British conspiracy theories. 
they're wild because they're probably true. Mm -hmm. I mean, like it, it, anyone is interested in it's linked to the North Operation Clockwork Orange. Very interesting mm -hmm. stuff. I won't go into it here because it's about Ireland. But so they 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 blew up Lorman Batten. Nearly every single channel did not give a shit about eighteen parachute mm -hmm. regiment people dying. Mm -hmm. Even though to the IRA in their minds that was probably the more viable political, the most important target. Everyone cared about Lord Van Batten. Yeah. And they realized early on, it's like, that's probably not the way to go about mm -hmm. this. Then they moved. They said, look, no one gives a shit about soldiers. Mm -hmm. They moved for political figures. And then you had something like the Brighton bomb where they all like seconds. Mm -hmm. They could have wiped out Thatcher and most of her cabinet. Yeah. And they killed quite a few of them, but they, they missed Thatcher by just a second. Yeah. And they, um, it's very interesting. Uh, British intelligence have all these files that they're now disclosing. Mm -hmm. And Thatcher came into them and she was furious. So I want to take the gloves off. And your man just said, no, you don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. he, says, he says, there will be a, a prolonged, violent, bloody conflict on the mainland if you do that. Mm -hmm. Just right after that, they decided to go for the Anglo-Irish Agreement. Mm -hmm. So the IRA realized early on, it's like, that hit the right note. Mm -hmm. We went for the right target there, mm -hmm. and we've got this now. The Anglo Irish Group did not work out, you know, they pulled out of it fairly quick. I remember Thatcher came to Ireland, yeah, that might have been for that. It probably was around 1990, yeah, that's probably right. She nice. flew in, she came into Ireland, right? So I was in the range wing at the time, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So at, before that, Gaddafi had sent shiploads of arms to the Semtex, IRA, everywhere. and they figured they had surface air missiles. So yeah. Thatcher's now flying into Dublin. And the IRA might have a surface there missile. So oh, right. I was in the range wing. We were in helicopters, armed to the teeth with fast ropes rigged up and everything. And we were basically mowing the lawn in helicopters yeah. uh, in that like five mile stretch of land between the Irish Sea and Dublin Airport. Oh, so wow. I went up and down and up and down and up and down because we were looking for somebody on the ground with a surface there missile. Like no shit, right? <laughs> and you know, helicopters are cool for about 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah. And then they're just not cool anymore, yeah, right? Yeah, so yeah. you think about it, when we took off and we were flying, everybody's hanging out the door, we're all rigged up, we're all looking and scanning and then, 10 minutes later, maybe you know, there's five of us in the bird, let's say, maybe 10 minutes later, there's two guys still scanning who are really into it, right? You go after 30 minutes, everybody's asleep. In, in, in Like the only person awake was the freaking pilot. Like we're all <laughs> racked out in the bird. We were like that. And then uh, when she came in, I was landed at the time. I was on a roof with a sniper rifle in, in uh, Dublin airport. Right. One, of, one of the guys beside me said, one shot, that'd be famous. Well, yeah. <laughs> If she knew, but her version of Air Force One flew in and yeah. landed and taxied and sat there for a while, cord on with in, security everywhere, and she never budged. It was like 30 minutes or something, she didn't move. Yeah. And then two Wessex helicopters came across from England yeah. and landed, yeah. and she got out of one of them. Yeah. The, the airplane was a complete decoy. That's yeah. how seriously they took that oh, threat. Yeah. yeah. Because that, that goes back even to the 70s. I mean, it wasn't the IRA, it was the INLA. Mm -hmm. Probably when, I, I'm not sure about this, so don't quote me on it, but mm -hmm. probably when Dominic McGlinchey kind of took over the reins. Mm -hmm. uh, Airy Neve, the other guy who said, I'm going to take the gloves off in yeah. the north. Yeah. Uh, they snuck into Westminster. Yeah. Put a mercury tilt switch bomb under his car and when yeah. he went up the ramp, boom. Yeah. And, she, and he was personal friends with that. Oh yeah. yeah. And, but he was the guy, he was, you know, former SES, escaped cold it's yeah. I'm going to take the gloves off. And people realized he probably was going to take yeah. the gloves off yeah. and be, be a total war kind of guy. And they said, well, oh, we can't have that and kill yeah. them. Yeah. So, I mean, like, ultimately these guys, it's, I think it's probably the same with every insurgency. Big countries, while they have all these resources, they're a much bigger target. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's much easier to get to you than to oh, yeah. me, you know? Yeah. And, and you, you, you don't want to change your way of life too no. much because then you they've won. Yeah. And then you don't change your, your way of life, then you're, you're still a big target, you yeah, know? Yeah. You talk about Mount Batten. I, I had a relative living in, in Newry. Yeah. And he was telling me one time that the, when that happened, he was a little kid. He was playing soccer. And the British soldier would come up and start beating the crap out of him with tears in their eyes, saying it's bad enough when you kill soldiers, but when you you kill royalty it's stepping over the, like, yeah like honestly yeah i mean like it's, it's crazy i mean that i mean uh, look uh, there's I, I don't know how much we can he has say. blood on his hands i know yeah uh, but yeah. he's, he's mm -hmm. also involved in some i know very sort of stuff i know yeah yeah like, he I was, mean, yeah he was uh, a there, weirdo. there's a creepy stuff there there is and uh, one of them was on the boat with him i think yes, yes. yeah yeah uh, you yeah. know yeah. I, yeah. yeah I mean i i, I yeah. think the listeners if they if they if they want to look at that stuff yeah look up Laura Batten. look yeah. up his activities and 
Look up Clockwork Orange. It's it's a, it's it's bizarre, but it's possibly true. Yeah, a lot of things are coming out now because yeah. the peace process and because it's moving on, and, and and there's a lot more information, and yeah. and we start hearing about things we never heard about before. Oh, yeah. Let's quickly because we we, we we bounced around a little bit. Sorry, we're at an hour. We're good. Let's talk about. Uh, we talked about the UVS, Ultra Volunteer oh, Force. Yeah. What was the other big one? UDA. UDA. Uh, UDA and... Um, the UDR were the same thing. Same thing. In, in, and, in RUC, and RUC, all these acronyms are the same. Yeah. Like, I mean, but they all just equal to dead patties, you know. Uh, there's, there's a really good documentary I saw. I think it's on YouTube called Collusion yeah. in Northern Ireland. And it was basically the, the, the RUC, the, Royal, the police in Northern Ireland... Yeah. The UDR yeah. were a regiment of the British Army. Yeah, biggest one. Yeah, and and from Northern Ireland, right? Yeah. And then the UDA was a terrorist organization, right? Yeah. But they they were all the same thing. Yeah. So they were giving intel that the British Army would collect on IRA members to the UDA, and they would go kill them. Yeah. They, they were giving them weapons. They yeah. were giving them equipment. They were yeah supporting uh, them. Ridiculous. Yeah. An important note to make is that the UDA was a legal organization up until 1993. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I mean. It was an Ulster Defence organization. They used uh, like they, they used different groups. Like they, they'd use cover names like Ulster Ulster Freedom Fighters or Red Hand Commando Red Hand, yeah, yeah. Uh, to to kill a few Catholics. But I mean, mm -hmm. like, and when I say it, like, kill a few Catholics, like, there is sectarianism in this conflict, but it, it does seem to be predominantly one sided kind mm -hmm. of sectarianism. Like uh, the Gusty Spence, who was probably one of the more respectable UVF leaders. Mm -hmm. um, uh, he still had the saying any tag will do a tag is a, a derogatory term for a Catholic mm -hmm. uh, like he says if you can't find someone important any tag will do so I mean if you looked Catholic that, yeah. a lot of times they killed regular Protestant people because they looked Catholic yeah. these guys yeah. the, the, the problem is I think by and large they never really developed as a paramilitary organization because they had their hands held by the British Army for so long and yeah. intelligence services so they never really had to have that Darwinism moment yeah. like if you looked at the provisional IRA during the 1970s, the cowboy element got killed or captured a long time ago. Yeah. And the best, or if you want to call it the best, but mm -hmm. I mean, the, the, the toughest, most brutal, smartest. the smartest mm -hmm. guys, they lived, same, they perfected. Same uh, as the Taliban. Same as the Taliban. <laughs> same as everybody. Yeah. Uh, same yeah. as the British Army too. Yeah. I mean, like... Um, British Army had to learn and develop. They and did. the guys who didn't, they got killed. Yeah, you know? they did. Um, yeah, the guys who did stupid stuff and yeah. opened doors and shined lights on things and yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And people do that because they're human. I was know? on a, I was on a coordinate search exercise when I was in the infantry. I don't know if it was in the range wing along the border, and we were with the guards, the yeah. Irish police, and did I he remember, kick yeah, Fuck. he came up on a, on a flask like a thermos. I think I know, and this he time. just kicked it, and I was like. Why? What is wrong with you? Yeah. <laughs> it's like I, I remember hearing this from a person. Uh, she she was um, she was from the north. Uh, she'd be from a loyalist background uh, and, and a person I, I would really respect. Yeah, you yeah. know, and a nice mm -hmm. person. Uh, but I think she her father's friend was an RUC guy. Uh, no, no, her father was a yeah, I think he was RUC fella, and he kicked a milk churn. Yeah. Why would you do that? So he blew, blew his leg off. But oh. I mean, like, but you know, it, it, like it's it's like what you put a roadside bomb in. Yeah, and it's like, yeah. and you don't have to be a genius. Like I think even if you had an American there and you saw two big mill churns with a big trip wire between them, yeah. they'd say, "I'm not going to kick that." Yeah, probably want to give that a, a wide bird. It, it, it's um, yeah, it, it's, it's it's shocking, right? Yeah. Um, uh, there was something I was going to say. I'm forgetting what it is. So we bounced all over the place. Yes, yeah, kinda. Right. No, it's okay. It's okay. Um, let's talk about today. Right. Let, let's just jump forward, and we'll do this again. But let's jump forward to where we are today, because uh, now that um, England has pulled out of the European Union, yeah, and that's the whole Brexit thing. <laughs> so now you have a country, Ireland, yeah. which the north part is not part of the European Community, yeah. and the south is. Yeah, and there's a lot of talk about borders going up and border yeah. walls going up and Guns coming back out. Where, where are we at now? That's hilarious, you know. And some I should be. I, I, I should be taking a more somber approach to all this. I'm sorry, but it is hilarious because like uh, the, the. So if you want to look at uh, different acronyms that are involved in terrorism, DUP, uh, Democratic Unionist Party, which is an oxymoron if you ever heard one. Mm. I mean, like, um, so they're linked to a group called Ultra Resistance, which funded, uh, had a huge arm caches from South Africa. And um, they funded people like the UVF and UDA and, and the Loyalist Volunteer Force after the Good Friday Agreement. You know, anyway, allegedly. Uh, so um, basically, they are the only party in the North that 
that that's in power that was against the Good Friday Agreement. They never wanted it in mm -hmm. the first place. Uh, but they're in a power sharing agreement with Sinn Féin, the main uh, Irish Republican Party in the North. Yeah. Um, is Sinn Féin the main party in the North? It is. Okay. Uh, uh, so now it is. No, that, okay. that's, that's, that's where we're getting that now. Yeah. I mean, so the DUP thought, okay, Sinn Féin are getting more powerful in the North. The demographics are going against us. What we what we really want is some sort of real division to keep them ones out, basically. Yeah. You know, want to put a big wall. So when it came down to Brexit, they were the only party in the North, except for maybe the TV, which is a tiny, tiny fraction of a party, that was campaigning for Brexit mm -hmm. and campaigning to, for them to leave the EU because they knew that would result in a hard border. Mm -hmm. And now, and they, in their minds, it came down to two things. They honestly thought that the EU would view us so poorly they would throw us under the bus because they view us so poorly they'd throw us under the bus. And for some reason, they thought that the British Empire or the, the UK loved them so much that they would try and keep them no matter what. When in reality, as it's been shown time and time again, they can't get rid of them quick enough. Mm -hmm. So the border is no longer between north and south. It's actually between east and west. There's a regulatory border now in the in the sea. In the in between, uh, It's not terrible. 80% of goods are able to get through. Mm -hmm. Businesses are fine because they have access to both the EU and the uh, UK markets. Mm -hmm. But the DUP because that it brings us closer to Ireland rather mm -hmm. than closer to UK, want to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. So so they basically didn't try to create a border with the six counties. They just said, hey, the Irish seize the border. That's what the, that's what the EU, uh, EU and the UK made that decision. The DUP okay. want the hard border between North and yeah, South. Yeah. And they're probably going to get it because they're, um, they've torn down all the institutions. Um, they've tried to bring in this thing called the Northern Ireland Protocol Bill which is going to remove Articles 2, 3, and 11 um, of the original agreement. And that basically tears up the Good Friday Agreement. Wow. So that, that ruins common travel. Uh, it, 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 it basically makes it very difficult to have a free-flowing border there. Mm -hmm. um, so this is coming at a time. Bear in mind, the DUP don't really, they, they don't have a real moral reason why they don't like the Northern Ireland Protocol, right? Mm -hmm. The real reason is because two things have happened in the last couple of months. Sinn Féin have come up and on top. They're now the most popular party in the North. They're going to be the first minister of the North. Mm. Secondly, they become the most popular party in the South. Mm. So very shortly, you're going to see Sinn Féin government in the South. Not for any real ideological reasons, more down to social reasons like housing and so mm -hmm. on. And then finally, the demographics of the North have finally changed. This this statelet that was carved up out of demographics and said it was going to be a Protestant for Protestant people is for the first time in 101 years is going to have an Irish Catholic majority. Mm. So that was always the big sticking point is yeah. that the, the population in Northern Ireland is predominantly Protestant. Yeah, that's changed. I mean, like yeah. it's um, and it's even more stark when you look at the younger generations. Mm -hmm. This is the generations now, right? Uh, but like the, the there's a a very very stark change where you look at the amount of people who are protestant and you look at their age group they're quite uh, quite a bit older six mm. 60 70 above young yeah young groups anyone's from the teens 20s and 30s are catholic mm. um what's the general attitude the hard part with a long long running conflict like, like yeah. this is you have to get one generation to live in peace yeah. so that becomes the norm right yeah, when yeah. when you're growing up and, and it's all violence 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 it's yeah. a very difficult cycle to break but if you break that cycle and i don't know has it been broken but mm -hmm. if you break that cycle for one generation now the norm is peace and people don't want to go back to that has that happened or not you know, it, it's funny you say it. Like, I mean, there's, like, I, I don't, like, the peace process is a good thing, I, I think, ultimately. I, I don't think it ultimately gave us peace. I think it just gave us an absence of overt violence, you mm -hmm. know? There's still a lot of malcontents. And, you know, if you, it's like a, th a skin over a soup. You, you can tap it down, it bubbles right up at the surface. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, a lot of the, there's a big difference between the youth in the loyalist population and the Irish nationalist population. How so? If you were a loyalist during the 60s, 70s, 80s, uh, you could get a job mm -hmm. by just saying, I'm, I'm a loyalist and I'm a Protestant. Mm -hmm. I, I, I should get a job. Mm. Um, the Catholics, by and, by and large, invested heavily in education. They realized you need to get every leg up you can to, to make it even even in the in this society. And now most of the college graduates are Irish Catholics. Mm. Most of the people who are working in precarious jobs are loyalists. Mm. And that's a serious problem for them. And 
because they had a situation where they had supremacy over a population for so long, now that things don't have that sort of, um, now they don't have the benefit of just saying, I'm so-and-so and I believe in so-and-so and so I should get the job, they feel that's inequality. Mm. So because there's 11, play, 11 playing field now, it's inequality. For yeah, them. I know. So I, I think yeah, I think we got some of that here too. So mm -hmm. I think I think he's they're, they're feeling the uh, they're feeling it's it's not as good as it used to be. And yeah. there's a lot of roasting the glasses towards the past for a lot of the loyalist population. I think there's a I think by and large most people don't want to go back to violence. Mm -hmm. I honestly believe that. I do think there is a small but maybe significant minority within loyalism that would be happy to be in a state of constant war if it meant keeping them within the union. Yeah, yeah. And mm -hmm. you're never going to change those people's mindsets, uh, really. I mean, ultimately, will they cause hassle and damage? Yeah. Uh, I, I think, honestly, what we're looking at here is probably Irish reunification in about 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, that's the way it's going. All the polls suggest it. Uh, even the polls in Ireland where they're saying really stuff to put you off voting for United, they're still getting like 62% people mm. wanting it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, what do the English say? The English don't. The uh, English don't even know it exists. Then Northern Ireland? Yeah. It's a thorn the, in their side. Like, yeah. I, I mean, like, very rarely you might get someone saying, like, I fought over there, therefore, mm. I, you know, mm -hmm. they have that kind of attachment. That's fine. But the vast majority of people think, number one, why is this? And I, I remember talk uh, as gas. I did course over in the UK for training, and I remember it just came up. And one of the guys was an RAF guy, mm -hmm. and a young fellow, lovely fellow, nice guy. I said, "Why are we supporting this backwater?" Mm -hmm. And you know, look, it produces nothing economically for them. It produces mm -hmm. nothing. Mm -hmm. there, there's nothing coming out of it. It's hev It was heavily reliant. It's very funny. Um, it was heavily reliant on EU subsidies. Now that's no longer there. Mm. It's the poorest part of the UK by a, uh, by a, a metric mile. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, like, it, it, if they got rid of that, I think that all these negotiations with the EU would be smooth sailing. Mm. I, I, I think the EU, all, the thing is, right, the sad point of it is, it, it won't come down to national pride and wanting to answer the, 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 the national question, reunite the country. It'll come down to the matter of economics. Mm. Like, the EU wants stability and they want security in the single market mm -hmm. and Northern Ireland is the very definition of instability it is yeah. it is I mean and, and in, in Ireland as well it would be a far more stable country if, mm -hmm. if that wasn't the case if that mm -hmm. situation wasn't there mm -hmm. um, the UK are like these guys are holding us back mm -hmm. so through the jigs and the reels eventually uh, yeah. I, I think that they'll, they'll sh uh, shake them off, mm -hmm. you know. Interesting. Yeah. Um, all right, let's wrap it up there. I, I, you know, that was an interesting conversation for me. Uh, if you guys want more of this, just let me know and uh, we'll do it again. We, we could talk about this for weeks. I mean, it's such a... Uh, an interesting and it's it's just got so many different tangents to oh, it. Yeah. Like you yeah. could go down rabbit holes for days, yeah. you know, um, but... Um, yeah. Okay, um, Ashin, I appreciate it, man. Right. We'll, we'll see you again. Uh, until Stop. next time, stay alert, stay alive.